What's up? It's 11 o'clock and I have work in the morning. I still gotta record this video on time. Let's go. <laughs> Just a quick warning before we go forward. This video is incredibly slapdashed and um, no, there's no script, there's no nothing. It's 11 o'clock, I'm tired. I just, I gotta get this video out in like two days. So we're just kind of doing whatever and seeing what sticks. Okay, so what is even the topic of today's video? Uh, it's music. Something that I recorded but forgot to put in the, uh, you know, 2023 like review video kind of thing, which by the way, yes, I'm fine now. I recovered from the sickness, from the illness that was in that video. But I recorded like a little section of the video to be like, hey, I'm listening to a lot of music. You know, uh, here's some stuff I've been listening to. I've been doing Bandcamp Fridays, yada, yada, yada. But me being me, I just forgot to put it in the video. So I guess we're just gonna milk this topic into its, its own unique video, whatever. So yes, I have been listening to a lot of music as of late, but uh, it's not really music that anybody knows. You know what I mean? Call me a hipster all you want, you wouldn't be the first, but I just generally don't feel fulfilled listening to like the more popular artists out there. And there are some notable exceptions, don't get me wrong. I, I don't hate Tyler the Creator. An interesting thing is that every modern artist I listen to that's still like putting out music is like lesser known artists on like Bandcamp. Which, hey, speaking of, that is a perfect transition into the topic of this video, Bandcamp Fridays. But first, what is Bandcamp? Whenever I explain the uh, concept of Bandcamp Fridays to like friends or coworkers or whoever, uh, they're always confused as like, that's cool, what is Bandcamp though? So if, if you don't know, uh, Bandcamp is a website where you can go on and publish your music and sell it and also sell merch and all this other fun stuff. It's, it's a cool website. And on the first Friday of every month, they like to do what they call Bandcamp Fridays, in which the company Bandcamp waives all of its platform fees for artists. So whatever the cut is for artists to give to Bandcamp for just being on their platform, they don't have to pay that. Meaning that more of the money you spend on music on that platform on that day, more of it goes to the artist rather than platforms or all that other garbage. And honestly, it being once a month, the first Friday of every month actually like leaves room for this really interesting little ritual that I started doing. Because one month is a pretty good length of time to listen to one, two, even three albums like in their entirety. And when I say in their entirety, I don't mean just listening to the album once and then putting it away. I mean like listening to it, listening to it. Like over and over and over again and noticing little details, playing it on different uh, speakers and headphones, you know, like really trying to appreciate the music that you paid for. So that's what the topic of this video is. I believe it's the 5th of December that is the band December, wait, fuck, it's January. <laughs> and so today on the 5th of January, it is uh, the first Bandcamp Friday of 2024. Let's just start with what I'm getting right off the bat. I'm just gonna start with uh, this album that I'm getting by Oblique Occasions and Macro Blank called Verdant Halcyon. Hal Halcyon? I don't know, I don't care. See, what's interesting is that over the past year, I've been kind of really getting into the like vaporwave slash chill wave genre of music because like, dude, I just need some like good vibes right now. And these albums, tremendous vibes. When I say albums, I mean other artists in this genre like Oscob, uh, Macro Blank on their own, Oblique Occasions on their own. Um, they have some just fantastic albums that I would highly recommend you check out. And of course, links to like my uh, Bandcamp like library will be in the description down below so you can see pretty much everybody I'm talking about right now. Next album I'm getting is gonna be Rat Wars by Health. And I'm gonna be honest, the only reason these guys are on my radar is because of Ultra Kill Twitter. Kino Fabino, Gianni, even uh, Hakita, I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but they all post memes and bullshit about the band Health. And I'm like, you know what? Let's actually check these guys out. And I listened to a couple of tracks on this album because you can do that on Bandcamp. And it's a very cool industrial sound. Not usually something I listen to, but I fuck with grunge and Primus a ton. So I'm down with those like really heavy grungy type of sounds. So let's branch out and go with something more industrial. And then the final album I'll be getting this month is Luno by Blood Cultures. More of an indie rock kind of vibe. 
And like, what's interesting is that the reason this album is on my radar at all is because of the track, I believe it is uh, Set It On Fire. This track was played during a trailer for a skating game that I saw at the Devolver Digital like showcase for E3 one year. This had to have been like two or three years ago. And like the song just blew me away at how fucking cool it was. And so I decided to find it on YouTube and I listened to it a lot on its own. So I figure, fuck it, let's just get the whole album and listen to the whole thing. Because I'm not really a playlist kind of guy. They can do wonders when you want to just dump a bunch of albums onto one playlist and just hit random if you're like grinding in Stardew Valley or Monster Hunter or whatever. But if I'm listening to music, I'm going to listen to the album. So yeah, these are the three albums I'm getting this month. And the, the varied, like eclectic, like shit mix of genres and styles and vibes and all this kind of stuff. But that's just kind of what I want to do from now on. You know, I want to experiment more with different music types and even some game stuff and, and books and manga and whatever, whatever. And like stepping out of your comfort zone is very hard. But if you're doing it with something like music, I feel like that's a little bit easier, you know? Prime example, I did not like Too Mellow when I first started listening to his music. But after listening to it a bunch, like a few times here and there, yeah, no, dude, his funktastic style really grew on me, and now he's one of my favorite artists of all time. You know what, actually? Yeah, I mean, take a look at this. For someone who doesn't like Too Mellow, or at least didn't like him at the start, now owns a uh, vinyl of one of his favorite albums by them, Memories of Tokyo Toe. Too Mellow, if you're watching this, you're not gonna watch this, but dude, like, whenever Too Mellow finally releases Memories of Tokyo Toe Future on vinyl, holy shit, dude, I, ooh. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use that vinyl as a little teaser for uh, my upcoming vinyl video. And I guess that's just kind of it. I wanted to uh, showcase Bandcamp Fridays, talk about the music I'm getting, why I'm getting it, you know, just a little bit of recommendations here and there, and also point you in the direction of my entire collection. Literally anything on there is super worth getting and has a big, like, two thumbs up from me. And if I'm allowed to get on my soapbox for a minute, let me just say that uh, what I find unfortunate about today's modern climate when it comes to media consumption, and I'm just as guilty of this as anybody else, is that we all sort of treat media as this disposable thing. You watch the movie, you listen to the song, you play the game, you discard it, you move on to the next one. Some people really jive with this, and honestly, more power to you. If you like grinding through a whole list of, and series of games and books and whatever, and you just like binging this shit just to say that you've read the most books or you've played the most games, that's fine. But like, I'm starting to realize now that that's not really possible for me to personally keep up with. Granted, I still want to go out of my comfort zone a little bit and I want to try new things and I really want to take care of that backlog of games and books and whatever that I have. I've built up over the past like God knows how many years. But I recognize also that it's just really difficult for me to get into new things nowadays. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I'm getting older or maybe I just don't have enough time anymore or I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But because of all of this, I don't really fuck with uh, subscription services like Spotify or Amazon Music or YouTube Music or whatever. Because that's kind of the funny thing about human brains is that we're really stupid. And a common thing that you see in like gigantic music libraries or Steam libraries or whatever, uh, when you present a person with infinite choices, they'll get overwhelmed by it and oftentimes not really choose anything. So in my perspective, paying 15 bucks a month for an infinite library of music doesn't really feel worth it to me, considering all I'm gonna do when I see Spotify is just go for the music I already listen to. And the really unfortunate thing is that the artists who make this music get paid pennies on the dollar. So this like really weird twist I'm getting at is I'm paying more money for less choice because it makes my brain feel better. Also because I get to support the artists more directly, so. I mean, that's another thing for Bandcamp Fridays. And also like just beyond the point of if you pay for a subscription service, you're not actually owning the music, you're more so renting it. So let's say for example, I joined Spotify because I really wanna to listen to Igor by Tyler the Creator. And let's say for some fucked reason, Tyler dies and he wants all of his music to be taken down from Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, whatever. So the entire reason for me paying the 15 bucks a month to listen to Igor vanishes and I'm not allowed to listen to that album anymore. What the fuck am I paying the service for? That's a rather morbid example, but this kind of shit happens all the time with subscription services. Licensing deals falter and get renewed and all this shit. You see it all the time in every subscription service, from Spotify to Netflix to even Game Pass. 
But when I buy music on Bandcamp, I can download that, put that on my Plex server, and then I just have my music library just with me forever, right? If I take care of the library anyway. Even if Bandcamp were to die like tomorrow, I would still have all of the music I purchased on it because I have it backed up on my own system. That's the thing we gotta also understand, is you can't trust companies to actually handle the stuff they're selling with any, co with any sort of respect at all. Looking at you, Nintendo, and Sony, and Microsoft, and every gaming company ever. So yeah, very long-winded video talking about my philosophies on ownership and, and music stuff and how it all funnels into Bandcamp Fridays. Just go buy any of these albums that I have on screen. They're all super worth it. They're all really, really good. And the beautiful thing about Bandcamp is that you don't have to take my word on it. You can listen to these albums in full on your own and decide whether or not you actually want to go through with the purchase. And the coolest thing is that even if you don't buy your music during Bandcamp Fridays, you're still giving the artist more money than you would by using a subscription service like Spotify. I think this is a win on every front. The only thing you're losing is you have a smaller library at the start. Because if you keep getting music on Bandcamp and you keep building up your library, you're gonna have the big library like on Spotify. And it's not going to be a random shit mix of whatever the fuck gets put on the system and whatever gets taken off and all this other garbage and just whatever. You're getting this curated little library that is yours and speaks true to your personality and your interests. It's kind of like having like physical media. It's not a perfect analog, but having physical, oh my God, <laughs> sorry. I pulled this uh, CD out and I completely forgot that this is the burned copy of the CD that I got from uh, Essinger's live tour where his bus fucking burned down. So I pulled this CD out and I just get a strong smell of burning plastic because, um. It is, it's, it's melted and it's burned. CD was totally fine. I was able to rip it, no problem, but you know, interesting damage to the case. Okay, uh, back to the point. You know, buying merch and physical CDs during a concert tour is legitimately the best way to support an artist that you care about. But that kind of gets muddled when not every artist is always on tour and bands can fall apart and people can die and it just gets messy. Real world is messy. But uh, getting an album on Bandcamp, I think is the next best thing. Cause you still get to have the files on your own system. You still get to support the artists directly. And with Bandcamp Fridays, you get to support them even more than what you usually could. Cause uh, yeah, the world's tough right now. And I think we all need whatever help we can get. I may not have a whole lot of skills, but at the very least I can make this video here and tell you guys to please support artists that you care about. <laughs> I swallowed air. Support artists that you care about. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, fuck, I'm tearing up from that one. <clears throat> yeah, fuck it. It's like, I'm not wearing my watch, but it's late. I'm keeping that in. Fuck you.